Hello and welcome back to the Little Drops of Wonderful Knitting and Crochet podcast. Uh, this is my space on YouTube to talk about all the th knitting and crochet things that I've been up to and share them with you and other crafty stuff and books and chatter as well. Make alongs. I have news this episode of the Strictly Sock Along. Lots of exciting news. And I've got a random giveaway as well. I've also got a cup of tea. It is the 3rd of September today. It's Friday. I normally work on Fridays, but I've got the day off. My youngest daughter has just gone back to school. She's in her very last year of primary school. She started back today. So it's all feeling very autumnal, back to schoolish and very, very exciting. Although I think we're supposed to uh, get a bit of a bout of hot weather next week, which is sort of September's last hurrah, I think. But I will not get onto the subject of the weather within like 30 seconds of starting the podcast, I promise. So for the next 45 minutes to an hour, probably nearer to an hour, I'm going to be talking to you about all the knitting and crochet bits that I've been up to over the last month, because it's been about a month since I filmed a podcast and other stuff besides, and we'll just see where it all takes us. There's always plenty of tangents. I've got all of the chapters for each section of the podcast underneath in the description box in case you need to hop about and find anything, come back and be reminded. But I also put links to everything, patterns, yarns and stuff that I talk about underneath, so that should help guide you on your way and enable. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just thank you everyone for being here. There were so many brilliant, much more um, interesting and informative knitting and crochet podcasts out there uh, to watch. So if you're here to spend a little bit of time with me, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who was so encouraging about my uh, tutorial that I did for the crocheted hand warmers, which of course I don't have with me because I'm not that organized. So I shall put a picture up on the screen. I did a tutorial for some crocheted hand warmers. It's my first ever proper crochet tutorial, even though I've been crocheting. I'm just gonna move this bag because I keep kicking it. And we were just here rummaging the whole time. Um, I've been crocheting for over 10 years, but I never sort of deemed myself to be expert enough to sh share how I do it. So, um, but I had a lot of encouragement from the viewers of this podcast to give it a go. And so far, the feedback has been brilliant. So thank you if you've made them. It is a free pattern. Tutorial's completely free. It's also on my blog, which is linked underneath. And where else can you get it for free? I think that's it for free. You can, you can download it for a paid amount from Ravelry if you wish. So it's just all nice and printable. But like I say, you can watch the tutorial for free or you can read it on my blog for free. So... If I were you, I'd do that. <laughs> By the way, it took me four times just then to start this podcast because I'm so out of practice. And having now done the introduction and decided to just stick with it, I've realised I've just introduced everything as saying knitting, crochet, knitting, crochet. And the first finished thing I'm going to show you is actually something that's sewn. <laughs> but this is, this is not the norm. I don't normally have finished things that I've been sewing. It's normally knitting or crochet. But I'm going to start with these and have another. I should really start gulping tea before I start speaking. Okay, I've put the tea down so it won't distract me anymore. So the first thing I've got here are some hand-sewn bears that I made for my two girls. So if we went on holiday to Scotland in August. If you're interested in seeing that, I have another channel. It's called This Is All Wonderful Life. And it's where I vlog. Just, I vlog every week, I release, well, it seems that way anyway, every, every week on a Monday afternoon, I release a new vlog. And the last few vlogs have been all about our holiday to Scotland. And the one that's just about to come out, by the time you watch this podcast, it'll be out tomorrow, um, is about our trip from Scotland down to West Yorkshire for two nights and our trip home, basically. Anyway, I always do them a little a uh, sort of travel bag of fun things and things to eat and little things and it's become a bit of a tradition that I make them a toy and I usually crochet them a toy but this year I fancied making them a little hand sewn bear so I did a lot of looking on Etsy just love them I did a lot of looking on Etsy and eventually came across this pattern it is a little bear pattern by uh, Minky and Friends 
that's the name of the shop i'll link it underneath i'll link the actual pattern underneath because she has quite a few it is a beginner pattern and i would say when i was looking at it i was thinking how am i going to make that but and i and i did have to ask a couple of questions because i am that kind of wet around the ears is that the right expression wet around the ears to say you're new to something is that the right expression it doesn't sound right anyway i'm very new to sewing anything other than just slightly wonky bags so i had to message her a couple of times and she was so responsive and so helpful so i'd say a it's a really good pattern and b you can buy it with confidence knowing that you've got a bit of help if you get a bit stuck like i did so here are my two bears my minky and friend bears and the little dresses they're wearing that's a separate pattern that she sells and the pattern comes with the instructions to make the little pinafore and a scarf and a little hair bow and also some dungarees as well but i only had time because of course i left it to the last minute i only had time to make the dress i did little contrast um fabric for the ears and i also did contrast fabric for the um the paws at the bottom of their well no pads the foot pads at the bottom and if i'd had time i probably would have embroidered like a little heart or something on their bums uh, but I'm probably going to give this another go, to be honest. It's designed to be made with minky fabric, which is quite soft, furry, short pile fabric. But this is just a pair of Dan's old trousers. So that's their bears. Um, Lilia called hers, what is, I wrote this down, um, Clementine. Um, but I've got no idea why. This is Lilia's one, the blue. So that's Clementine. And Phoebe called hers Beatrice Beatrice Annie, which is a combination of two names of Eddie Stobart lorries that we saw on the journey to Scotland. <laughs> we were collecting the names of Eddie Stobart lorries, so Beatrice Annie is named after lorries. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah, I've linked that pattern underneath um, and I would highly recommend it if you want to give a bit of bear sewing a go. I love them, absolutely love them and they were really pleased. So that's my hand sewn thing. No, not hand sewn. That's my handmade sewn things that are finished. And I'm going to share with you a couple of finished knitted things. And I've got two half finished things as well, which I didn't know I was going to have until yesterday. because I went on a bit of a sock knitting frenzy. So my first finished object knitting wise, I've got a crochet finished object in a minute as well. Is a pair of socks now these are my waiting room socks uh, basically I keep a project in my rucksack at all times so if I'm stuck waiting outside work to get in or waiting at the doctors or waiting at the hairdresser anywhere I have to wait at least I'll have some knitting on me for emergencies anyway I decided I was fed up of having them in my bag because I'd had them for quite a long time and decided to just finish them and it's beautiful yarn it's by my friend Becky who is back to blighty let me show you the socks first so here they are here are the finished socks um it's a mini set and the mini set was called crocus and the colors are supposed to, uh, well the colors are represented representative of the colors of the crocus flower get it to focus on the socks instead of me the only thing I would change about them is how I striped the colours. I wish that instead of putting the two purples together, I had put the yellow in between the purples. That's the only thing. But I do quite like how I've got the, the stripe here uh, and the heel here. It's just a plain vanilla sock. I changed colours every 10 rounds and I used the method given in the striped mittens according to Badagak pattern which I shall also link underneath, where you weave in the ends of um, each colour change as you go. That works really, really well. I've got really used to doing that whenever I do anything stripey now. So I like to do that. I did a two by two rib. I don't think it's twisted. Can't tell now. No, I think it's just a two by two rib. And the heel I did is the heel from Ellie, um, who's Craft House Magic. Her Beeb Valentine's socks has a pinstripe heel, um, it's just a slip stitch heel with heel turn and gusset. These are the type of heels that fit me the best. Focusing. And I did these on 
60 stitches I think which is quite big for me I normally knit on 56 stitches because I'm a fairly loose knitter and I was really pleased that I managed to stripe it every 10 rounds even at the very end of the toe that equals 10 rounds I was very pleased with that that worked out nicely and I've got a nice matching pair really really like them and once I'd finished them Dan said oh I really like the colors of those I would have worn those if he'd mentioned that when I was knitting them, I could have just made the foot longer and they could have been for him. Grr. So anyway, they're for me now, so at least I've got a pair of socks. So that is my crocus, uh, my crocus waiting room socks. I'll just show you what I've got left. So back to Blighty is the yarn. That's her logo. Lovely Becky, who I have the pleasure of knowing in real life. Um, 75, 25 superwash merino nylon and it was 4 times 25 grams so that was 425 metres I had and this is what I have left now I fully expected to have the least left of this colour because that was the one I used for the heel um, and then this is how it looks for the other three colours which is weird because I think I've used them all equally in the sock so I don't know how I've managed to do that I haven't weighed them yet um, but if there's enough here, possibly for another pair of shorty socks, I might use them for that, or I might add them to my pile of minis that I keep for doing swaps and things like that. Um, but I really do love this yarn. It really is pretty. So that is the Crocus Mini set by Becky. I don't know if she still does the Crocus Mini set, but Becky's yarn always smells amazing. Like the whole time I was working with it. Just smell, you can tell which yarn in my stash is from Becky because of how beautiful it smells. <laughs> By the way, this is the, no, that is not a rude finger, that is my ring finger. Um, I did a, a, a finger prick blood test this morning, so that's why I've got a blue plaster on my finger to stop me from bleeding all over the bedroom carpet. Um, in this bag here, which is a beautiful bee bag that was made just for me by Suzanne, Hi Suzanne, who's a lovely viewer of this podcast. And oh, it's got bee pins on there. They were a mystery gift that turned up. And then we worked out, because Hilary messaged me, that it was for my friend Hilary in Australia, who is an incredibly lovely lady and very generous to have sent that and some other little bits for the girls as well. So I thought the bee pins looked lovely on my bee bag. I've got what I think might be a finished shawl. I'm not sure. You tell me what you think. So for this, I have been using... Hang on, let me get it all out and I shall tell you all. Oh, by the way, with this bee bag, I've got a matching um, DPN holder, which I'm keeping in the bag so that I remember I've got a matching one, but obviously this is a crocheted project, so I haven't been using that. In fact, I have been using this, which is a three millimeter tulip hook, which was a gift an unexpected gift really recently from the amazingly talented Rel, who is the Dabbling Hook. She has the Dabbling Hook podcast. She is a crochet uh, designer and a fabulous podcaster and just an all round lovely human. And she just ran, she, I was talking about crochet hooks a few videos back and she randomly sent me two hooks to try out. It was like an eBay surprise. And it was so lovely of her and I love this hook rail so thank you I really enjoyed using that and the yarn I've been using was also a gift Hayfield Spirit Double Knitting there's a really weird sound outside sounds like some kind of road works or something going on we did have a power cut earlier maybe they're doing something on the power lines somewhere in the distance um, this is a is it? Oh, yeah. 80% acrylic, 20% wool, and the shade is 0401. And I had two balls of this. It was a, a gift from Ali, who I had the great pleasure of meeting when I was up in Scotland in August. So hi, Ali, and hi, Stephen, who has to put up with listening to me in the background. That's her husband. <laughs> and all I've got left of those two balls, which apparently I've just started, I didn't think this was attached anymore. But apparently it was, so I've just unravelled two clusters. I'll just pull a big loop up and sort that out later. 
So I had two balls of this, it's DK, and I decided to make, can you guess? Can you guess what pattern I've been recently very obsessed with? Another Just Feel Better shawl. <laughs> so the Just Feel Better shawl is a free crochet pattern. It's actually designed for fingering weight um, yarn by uh, the lovely Kalisha of the Quirky Monday podcast, who is an absolutely cro crocheting legend. And she released a couple of free patterns that are designed. So she's got the Just Feel, Just Feel Better and the, and the Just Feel Festive. I haven't made the Just Feel Festive. I think I might do that this Christmas, possibly. I'm working on a blanket, an advent blanket as well. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so this is the Just Feel Better shawl. They're designed to be mentally soothing. So once you've got the rhythm of the pattern, they are really easy to work on. You don't need to think about anything else. And honestly, that's it does exactly what it's designed to do. This is such a soothing project. I love it. It's granny stitch. We all love granny stitch. It's easy and the finished thing just it just fits so nicely i made a fingering weight one of these and i wear it all the time in cold weather so this is the dk weight version that i've made now the only problem i have is i don't think it's big enough it's hard to show you Ow, i just hit my ankle on the side of the chair uh doesn't that yarn come out really well though i love the way it kind of self stripes even though even though obviously the width is changing, you start at a narrow end and work your way up to the wide, and it just keeps getting wider and wider. So you can just stop when you want. And the pattern shows you how to do a border for it. And I didn't do a border on my first one, and I wasn't planning on doing a border on this one, but I've run out of this yarn now. I don't want to buy any more of it. I'd rather use stash. And how I wear my shawls, usually when it's not attached to yarn, um, is usually like this. So obviously this is a lot chunkier than the fingering weight one because it's DK. And the two little bits that come around only come to here. Um, <laughs> and I would like them to come a little bit further down, otherwise it's just going to keep popping up and be difficult to manage. So the only solution, and I don't really want to, so if I was to add yarn to the end, it would be going on this edge here. And this doesn't need any more. It's obviously it does add to the length when you do it. Uh, so that's one option. I could find another DK weight yarn that I have in my stash that would match these colours, or just a nice grey, a nice DK grey, which I could probably just go and buy in hobby craft, and just keep going until it's just that little bit longer, which will extend the the edges. Or I could do a border, which would also help to extend the edges. Or I could make tassels and put tassels on the end and that would just give it that extra length down there just to keep it held. I'm not sure what to do yet, but I would appreciate your thoughts and ideas. What would you do? What would you do? <laughs> As the Queen might ask if, if one was asking one's subjects. Why am, I, why am I trying to talk like the Queen? I should stop that, shouldn't I? Uh, yes. What do you reckon? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Right. I was going to, I'm going to move on to the things I'm working on. Now, obviously I never show everything I'm working on because, you know, that is a gigantic pile of things that I've always got on the go. So this is literally just the tip of the iceberg. But two of the things I've been working on um, are now half finished objects. So I'm going to show you those first because over the last couple of days I managed to get them to the half finished state because I just went on this sort of I just got really enthusiastic about sock knitting which hasn't happened in quite a while so I'm just going to grab a sock blocker and show you my first one now I started these uh, quite some time ago and hadn't really put much work in on them at all so I've really just knit this over the past week uh, the pattern oh by the way this is all living in one of the very first little dodgy bags I ever made which is my Chrysler building bag I've got this fabric years and years and years ago in a swap. I've got my little, um, what does it say? I knit therefore I am. I knit therefore I am badge on there. Couldn't read that backwards. And it's just the smallest and simplest of little bags. I've just got ribbon to do it up. And I love it. It's just perfect for a pair of socks. And yeah, it's one of the first little bags I ever made, which is probably why it's, you know, a bit too small, but, I would make another one this size, I love it. 
And the pattern I'm making was a gift from Jen Sheelan oh, a year, two years ago. They're called the Hint of Sophistication Socks. And I've said it before a million times, but that name of the socks and the picture, I'm not sure if it's that picture, but the picture's in the pattern. They, she shows the socks with red wine. Here's my, it's got my notes written all over it. Um, and it reminds me of one of my favourite films, which is French Kiss with Meg Ryan and Kevin Kline. Um, and she describes a red wine as having a hint of sophistication. So it reminds me of that. And the yarn is really precious because it was dyed for me. I'll show you the sock before I show you the yarn. I can't believe I've knit this, to be honest, looking at it. I'm like, how, how have I managed that? How, how have I, slightly rubbish knitter that I am, managed to knit this? It's amazing. It's amazing feat. It's a cabled sock. So the cables run all the way around the leg and then they peter out just onto the top of the foot as uh, cabled socks generally do. I've started with just a little hint of gold at the top and then I've gone into the main colour and I've done the rest of the sock all in the same colour and then decided to do the contrast colour and um, for the toe as well. And I'm really glad I did that. I think it looks really lovely. These colours are gorgeous. Look at that, I did cables. And I think it's the perfect match, given the red wine connection in the pictures. This is just the perfect match of pattern and yarn. Love it. And I just, yeah, I just busied myself away on these for about a week and got this first one done. Unfortunately, I only started the second one last night, so I well and truly put myself into a second sock syndrome situation. So I promised myself for the next week, I'm just gonna really get stuck into it and not you know, let them sit languishing for the next six months or something. I'd like these done before the end of the year, which I know to some of you would be like, what, the end of the year? That's months away, but trust me, um, it takes me time to knit things. I love this so much. And the uh, yarn was um, part of a swap I did with lovely Hannah. By the way, Han right, so Hannah, is Hannah from Sheep's Alley. She's in Finland. She's an incredibly creative human being. And she dyed this yarn. <laughs> I love this picture. She dyed this yarn, especially for me, when we did a swap about a year ago, maybe, maybe longer than that. It's called Yellow Is There Really because she wanted to dye yellow yarn. It went wrong. She over dyed it. So you can still see the yellow in this one that was over dyed. But um, obviously it's not yellow. It is a purpley, ready pink. Plum. A plummy colour. And then this golden yellow was the one that she included as part of the sock set, which is beautiful. So it's really precious yarn and I'm really looking for, and it's lovely as well. It's quite rustic. I really enjoyed knitting with it. I love knitting with slightly rustic yarn. I find it's so enjoyable. Um, it says it's 75% wool, 25% polyamide. So I guess whatever the wool is, is just quite a rusticy one. It's really lovely. It's not soft and it's perfect for socks and just, I really love knitting. And also what made it really fun to knit on was I was using these um, DPNs, which are also a lovely gift. And they are the knit, what are they? What are they called? Knit, knits, knits, knit pro somethings. <laughs> They've got a kind of coating on them that make them quite grippy. And these little measurements, you see, these little sort of pink and silver bits are all an inch. And they're supposed to help you measure your gauge. I've never used them for that. I just like them. I like how they look and I like how they feel. Um, I would have put on the screen the name of them, seeing as I couldn't form the words. So that is my hint of sophistication socks. So hopefully next time I'll show you a finished pair. And my next half finished object, I only finished this first sock last night. Again, I just was like, I'm gonna finish this first sock. I'm filming tomorrow. I want to get it finished to show everyone. And 
Lilia, my eldest daughter, has already laid claim to these. She wants them. She was about to steal just one sock last night, but I said, no, you'll have to wait until I've got a pair and then I can show them and then you can have them because she really loves long socks and she loves crazy colours. So if you are slightly um, garish colour averse, this is your warning now that for what I'm about to hold up is not for the lover of beige. <laughs> Gaina, Tales from Cuckoo Land, I'm looking at you. <laughs> this might make you nervous. These are my little French Meadow ultra long just under the knee high socks. They don't even fit on the blocker. They're coming over the top here. <laughs> so I had a load of minis for Little French Meadow that I wanted to use in one project. I was gonna make sure it wasn't working, so I decided to go for bonkers socks. They roughly follow the color of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. <laughs> there we go. I know the colours of the rainbow. So I'm really, really chuffed. Again, I uh, just did the pinstripe heel from V is for Valentine Socks by Ellie of Craft House Magic. Other than that, I did a one by one uh, twisted rib at the top. And I've knit these, I think I've knit them on, what, how many stitches have I knit them on? They're living, by the way, in my bag from Coco and Flora. How gorgeous is this bag? Everything Eva does at Coco and Flora is perfection. This theme is like little drops of wonderful theme. So it's like the umbrella to catch the little drops. Where's her thing? That's her, that's her logo. And it came with a little thing of stitch markers. It was a gift. Um, I think she donated a prize for the Strictly Soccer Long one year and she very naughtily included this for me. So if you were one of the people who won one of Eva's bags, you will know just how amazing her stuff is. And then in, in here, there's a little bit of fabric to line it that matches the bag and there are little droplets, little drops of wonderful my goodness, the detail. I wish I could think in that kind of detailed way. It's the details that make things, isn't it? Uh, this is my little project notes book that my friend Cherie sent me once in a swap. And I literally just use it for ticking off and making little scruffy notes. But I also stick things in randomly and just try to make it feel nice to flick through. Do you know when something's a bit, the pages are a bit stiff for having things stuck in them? That's satisfying, isn't it? Is that, that's not just me, is it? That is satisfying to do. So I just stick things on. And in this particular page, I've got some tea stained crumpled paper that Phoebe made me, especially. So that's why that's stuck in. And I've just been writing down the names if I know them of the minis and, uh, and just little notes. So I can tell you that they are on 64 stitches and I've done 20 rounds of each color. And again, I managed to do that exactly all the way to the end. Not through clever planning, just luck, just pure luck. I started the toe and I realized that when I came to the end, very last row of the toe, I had done 20 rows of the violet at the end. Amazing. So there you go, 64 stitches, vanilla sock. Um, a lot of people have asked if I would ever do a sock uh, knitting uh, tutorial video. And I'm feeling, feeling a bit more confident now after my crocheted hand warmer video, so I might do. I'm by no means an expert, I haven't been knitting as long as I've been crocheting, but I know how to knit a vanilla sock, and I know what I like to do to knit a vanilla sock. Like I know that I like, um, I don't even know what it's called, I think it's called the Norwegian cast on. I know that I like to do that, so I could show you how to do that. I know that I really like a one by one twisted rib, so I could show you how to do that. I know that I really like knitting on DPNs, so I could show you how to do that. I know how to do a simple um, slip stitch heel and heel turn. So I could show you how, you can see where this is going. I know the basic elements of a sock um, that isn't specific to any pattern, just elements that I like to do. Obviously it wouldn't be this heel because that's Ellie's heel. But, and then I just do a basic wedge toe. So I could do that. Maybe, maybe in 2022, maybe early 2022. If you are interested, I will do that. Let me know again. And I think that's all there is to say about my little French Meadow mini socks. 
apart from the fact that the second sock, I do normally knit my socks concurrently, but for some reason I got carried away on these ones and the ones before. Uh, the second sock is up to this point, so I'm at the point of doing the heel flap. Um, so there's not too much left to go really. My, the worst bit, the bit I least enjoy of knitting socks, I don't know about you, is the, the gusset decreases. I find that frustrating. I quite enjoy doing the heel and stuff because there's stuff happening and it's all quite quick. And then joining all back in and you're like, oh, I'm back on four needles or three needles, off I go. And then you're like, oh God, I've got to keep remembering to do these decreases and you kind of just get a bit fed up with them. That's my least favourite part. But fortunately it doesn't last too long and it makes me work on it quicker because I'm like, I just want to get these decreases done. Right, do I have any other stuff I've been working on to... Oh yes, oh yes I do, a really, a really big and important one. My holiday project that I took with us to Scotland. Uh, so it's all living in this crazy bag which of course has tassels and buttons and lace and a crochet doily and bobbles because it was made by Hannah who I was just talking about, Hannah from Sheets Alley. This is pure Hannah magic this bag and it fits my blanket that I was working on to take to Scotland plus a ton of minis as well and the crochet hook that I'm using. So this is all fingering weight yarn or four ply weight as we call it in the UK. I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook. Did you see how I did that then? That kind of holding it away that the old lady. I'll just send a text this like like my when my mum sends a text. Where's my phone? I'm sorry mum if you're watching I'm about to mock you. I just threw my crochet hook on the floor. Instant karma. So this is my mum sending a text message. That's turning into me. I don't wear glasses. I've got to go for an eye test next week. Um, but I have for a long time, it's been suggested that I do need to wear glasses for like when I'm doing close up work on the computer and things. And that gets steadily more suggested every time I go. And every time I go, I go, okay, yeah, I'll do that. And then I never get round to choosing the glasses because it's just another decision to make. <laughs> so who knows, maybe you'll see me wearing glasses within the next year or so. If I can ever get round to choosing some. What was that? What was the whole point of that? Oh, because I was looking at the crochet hook. Yes, yeah, so 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. I am making a corner to corner moss stitch blanket. I took it to Scotland, so you would have seen this a few times popping up on the Scotland vlogs over on this little wonderful life. And I crochet, I was so it's a rectangle basically that I'm making a corner to corner moss stitch crochet rectangle blanket using scraps. It's slow going because it's all using single crochet stitches which in um, UK terms is double crochet stitches but I tend to use the US term so single crochet stitches. Uh, so it builds very slowly. Um, it's going to be like a lap blanket size, a large lap blanket. So on the way up to Scotland <laughs> I crocheted and kept, um, I've already started decreasing for the long side, no, for the short side and then I kept increasing on the long side all the way up until we reached Scotland and when we got to Scotland, when we were there, I started to decrease so that we're now coming in, it's really hard to describe, so that the rectangle is now starting to, to decrease to the corner to become a fully formed rectangle. So basically I'm sort of past, way, way past the halfway point, but still some way from the end. I'm going to have to stand up to give you a sort of sense of how it looks. Um, moss stitch it really has a nice effect on hand dyed yarn. It really shows it off really nicely. I'm not putting these in in any order, I'm just bunging them in as I feel like. Sometimes I go, oh, there's not been yellow for a while, I'll do something with yellow, or there's not been a neon colour in a while, and so on. Ooh. So, you can see here, this is where the corner where I started, and then this is the other end of the short corner. You can see I've started to come up, it's straight, and that'll keep going. And then at the top edge, I've just started to decrease, and it's started to be straight up here. There we go. 
I'm really pleased with it and this was the perfect travel project for the car and because you don't want you, you don't really need to think about it and I've written down um, like the, the key things I need to remember at the end of the row just in case um, so it's really easy crocheting I was using the instructions by uh, every trick on the hook but I was start to get a bit confused when I get, got to the point where I was going to start decreasing for the rectangle so I did a bit of searching and I'm actually using different tutorial now it's also free um, and it's by the cookie snob whose name is Erin I'll link it underneath because um, I found it a bit easier to understand for my little brain um, for when it came to actually beginning to do the rectangle decreases but basically I'm just doing the same decreases at each end now so that's fine so I need to put a bit more work on this and get that finished but I've still got a way to go and this is a pretty long-term project so that's the corner to corner moss stitch blanket speaking of Scotland our trip to Scotland whilst we were away we had the very great pleasure of meeting some wonderful people and I have a bit of yarn to show you as a result of those meetings the first uh, the first person I met up with was lovely Ali is a viewer of this podcast and we've been in touch um, for a little while and she's sent us some gifts in the post in the past and when we met up we went for the most lovely cup of tea in Bankery uh, it was so nice to meet her and her lovely husband Stephen and have cake and hot chocolate and just catch up and what a lovely person she is and she was very generous giving us all some lovely gifts including a lovely gift from my mum thank you so much Ali and she gave me some yarn which is so special because it's hand dyed in Aberdeenshire now I have heard of Cooks and Crafts before I was aware of them but I don't think I actually have any yarn by her um, and Ali has given me three skeins of yarn by uh, Cooks and Crafts, hand dyed in Aberdeenshire. There we go. So this first skein here could not be more perfect for right now or for me. It's a four ply um, sock fingering base and it's called Autumn Hest. Now I feel like I ought to know what that word is. I shall ask my mother. I don't know if it is a Scottish word. But can you see? Autumn Hest. I'm sure if there are any Scottish people watching, you can let me know. I'm sure you will. That would be brilliant. Thank you so much if you do. And look, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Autumn yarn. Autumn yarn from beautiful Aberdeenshire. Oh, just lovely. I didn't buy any souvenir yarn, so this is my souvenir yarn from Scotland and it will hold in it such precious memories of a wonderful holiday and also of meeting the absolutely gorgeous Ali. Um, yeah, so this is lovely. Thank you so much. And she also gave me two skeins of another Cooks and Crafts yarn. The colours are beautiful, just like the other one is beautiful. But look, look at the little... Can you see the speckles of little tiny bits of yellow and neon pink? Oh my goodness, I love I love this colour. But the colour is a very special name um, to me because it reminds me just of family. It's Granite Speckle and Aberdeen is known as the Granite City because a lot of the stone there or all of the stone or most of the stone, it's granite, it sparkles. It sparkles and that's my that's my overriding memory of holidays in my childhood, going to visit my grandparents and my family. Um in Scotland was the granite the granite city, um walking around Aberdeen, being on Aberdeen Beach and just the sparkle of it. So yeah, this is cool. This is also on her sock fingering base. And I've got two skeins of this, so I'm gonna have to think of a really special project for this. I love this colour. Oh I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Ali, for those things. And oh, this is turning into a bit of an incoming section, so we'll just keep going. When we left Scotland, we spent two nights in West Yorkshire on our way home. And I had the very great pleasure of going for tea and cake at the lovely home of Dan and Kay Jones, the bakery bears. I'm going to move over so I can put my most favourite picture of the year up. Yeah. I met... Kay and Dan Jones and their beautiful daughter Bryony and Kay made cake for us. 
chocolate cake and my absolute favourite lemon drizzle cake and we ate it and drank tea with the bakery bears whilst eating cake that Kay made. It was literally like I met the Queen. That's what it felt like. I was giddy. We were supposed to go for an hour. We didn't get out of their hair for two hours. The kids got on famously. Dan and Dan were talking about Lego and American football and stuff like that. And honestly, they are just a delight, a total delight. And we left there and we still had two hours to drive to where we were staying and we were all just like on a high. We, it was just wonderful. And Kay gave me some yarn. I'm rubbish at presents. I didn't give her half as good a gift as this. She hand dyed, she made me cake and hand dyed me some yarn. I can't even get over it. The Bakery Bears label. And it says on the back, oh, so it's 80% superwash merino, 15% nylon and 5% silver stellina. So it's super sparkly. And the colorway, is little drops of autumn dyed exclusively for lovely Ali. I don't know whether to use this or frame it. <laughs> I honestly don't know whether to just put it in a frame above my bed or something. Look at the colour and how sparkly it is. Have you ever seen a more sparkly yarn? How? How? Do you know how? Because it has been imbued with a little bit of bakery bear magic. Kay has exactly the same one, so we'll, we will have to confirm and decide what we're going to make after I've finished looking at it. <laughs> and she also gave me some lovely minis, which I am going to show you, because if you, if you do follow the Bakery Bears and you watch them, I know that you will feel as excited about this as I am. Um, they're all leftover minis from socks that she's made. Now I'm going to have to use my memory. I think, no, not Moss Eccles. I think was this was for the socks. Sh sh oh no, I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to guess and then you can all tell me how wrong I am. School socks from, her mo from their most recent episode. Um, Homesteader socks, also known as the Obata socks, which she did for Vogue Knitting and socks that she did ages ago, <laughs> which I can't remember the name of. Anyway, honestly, I now have about six or nine minis from Kay, so I'm sort of hoarding them to do something specific. <coughs> I set myself really strict um, time limits for talking about everything and I think I'm already over it by about double. <laughs> so I need to pick up the pace. I decided to do a random giveaway. I was going through stuff, um, sorting out Strictly prizes, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And I found some yarn that I've had put away for a giveaway for ages. And I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna do a back to school style, just September, autumn's around the corner, celebratory giveaway of some yarn. That's what I'm gonna do. Now, the yarn itself was, a, was donated by lovely Katie. Thank you so much, Katie, for donating this some time ago. Um, and she said I could use it whenever I wanted to for giveaways or prizes. Um, it is Merino Singles by Needle and Fred. I've got two skeins of it. I like that, Needle and Fred. Because that's how I would say Needle and Thread. I've got a bit of a f, -f thing. <laughs> it's Merino Singles. It's four ply fingering, 100% Merino wool. Uh, single ply twist, amazing for shawls, it says, and I've got two of them. It doesn't say what the colour is, but it is a beautiful sort of plum. It reminds me of the colour of plums and blackberries and just a really nice autumnal colour. And I also have this beautiful little uh, Marks and Spencers, and we all like Marks and Spencers. If it's Marks and Spencers, it's posh. Lavender hand cream, and I thought that matched it perfectly. And I will pop in uh, one of my pins if you don't have one or one of Phoebe's pins to go with it as well. So if you want to be in with a chance to win, I'm going to keep it really, really simple and say uh, it's free to enter and it's not affiliated in any way with YouTube because I have to say that. And I will have to say that in the description box underneath. When you're leaving a comment, just make sure you include the phrase purple yarn. That's it. Now, obviously, do not go into the comments and just write purple yarn because you'll be disqualified. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> make an effort. <laughs> so if you're leaving a comment, just make sure you also put in your comment purple yarn 
and then when I do the random number generator next time, I uh, ran, random comment picker, sorry, I can tell it to look for that phrase and it will draw a winner from everyone that's used it in the comments. So just make sure you do that underneath the video if you're leaving a comment and I'll put that aside for next time. Let's move on to talking about make-alongs. Now, we're going to talk about the amigurumi along I've got going on to the end of the year, but please brace yourselves now. Prepare. Prepare. Because after that, we're talking about the Strictly Sock Along. Make-alongs, if you're not familiar with them, are a really fun way to be part of the community that surrounds this podcast and generally just to get to know other crafters and like-minded people who love knitting and crochet like you do, um, discover designers and yarns and just be immersed in yarny stuff basically. They're a really good fun way to just get involved in stuff and usually there are prizes and stuff and I've got a few prizes to give away um, for both of my make-alongs at the moment. So we've got a year-long amigurumi along going on. It wasn't supposed to be a year-long, it just sort of turned into it because we were having so much fun. And honestly, the the the, um, the thread that I have on Ravelry for this, which is both the chatter and the FO thread, is incredible. That, that There was posts in there from yesterday. It's so active, even after all this time. And the things, the creations that pop up, knitted and crochet things are welcome. Amigurumi is a term for like cute little... Um, creatures made from crochet but knitted stuff is absolutely 100% welcome as well anything 3d whether it's a cactus or a bear whether it's knitted or crocheted is welcome in the amigurumi along the hashtag is ldow ami along all of the details and links you need are underneath um, in the description box and just basically it's the, the thread is chock-a-block chock-a-block and I think there are nearly a thousand posts in there now wow a thousand posts. Um, so I had a little look this morning because I wanted to draw out some favourites so I could just show you. Moving over. Um, so Christina, who is Chris73, made um, Peppy the Sailor Pug um, from the pattern that I've written on the screen. I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. <laughs> and I really liked Peppy. And as I was looking through the thread, Phoebe was over my shoulder going, look at the pug. <laughs> so we really loved that one. And Heather who is Heather Sten. She knits, so it's a little knitted creature, a Halloween witch. And the pattern is Witchy Friend by Esther Braithwaite. And I really like that one because it's so, you know, if you started now, you could have a witch ready for Halloween. If I started now, I'd have a witch ready for next Halloween. <laughs> um, Abby, who is Abby X. I really liked the things she made and I screenshot what she said about this because the reason why she made them was really lovely. So she made um, Mary Seacole and Florence Nightingale. And I was quite excited by this because she used patterns from the book that I've got, which is, oh, oh God, I can't remember the number. So many women who changed, iconic women who changed the world. The book is downstairs, so I don't have it to show you. So I'll put a little thing up of the front cover of it. I've got that book, I got it for my birthday. I'm so excited to get stuck into it. Um, and she said, this year, my mum is retiring after working as a nurse for the NHS for over three decades. I wanted to make us something special as a little retirement gift. Growing up, my mum always taught me about Mary Seacole and Florence Nightingale and how they revolutionised nursing. So I knew I had to make my mum a Florence Nightingale and Mary Seacole amigurumi. So uh, so on the, as I've been talking, you would have seen both of them. Um, and she said for Florence Nightingale, oh no, so she said for both Amis, I use the Florence Nightingale pattern. However, for Mary, I use the hair from the Emmeline Pankhurst pattern, which is brilliant. And they came out so well. And what a lovely gift for um, an incredible mum who has done an incredible career in the NHS and where would we be without it? And speaking of health as well, I really loved our Minty's gallbladder. I thought that was brilliant. Um, and I think she said it was a gift for her surgeon. I'm not sure. And it reminded me of something that my friend Lorraine made me ages ago. I'm gonna get it. So my friend Lorraine is consciously crochet. You may remember her as Lorraine Pugh Designs, but she changed her um, social media name. She made me this. This is a J pouch. Um, if you're not aware, I had my entire bowel removed, my entire, my entire uh, large intestine removed 
in 2012, so uh, nine years ago now, and I had an internal pouch formed made out of the end of my small intestine, which is called a J pouch. Um, and it looks a bit like this. <laughs> probably just as happy as well. So I keep this um, in the cupboard in the bathroom, so every time I open the door, my little J pouch is staring at me. Let's put it there. These, by the way, are my little droplets. This is also a pattern that I did. Check me out, two patterns this year, and I said I never would. This is my little drop of wonderful. Um, and it's a pattern that I will link. It's on uh, Etsy and Ravelry. I think I priced it at something like two pounds, nice and low. <laughs> so that's my little drop of wonderful and the idea behind them as long as you don't use safety eyes this one's just decorative because he's got safety eyes is that you can squish them like a stress toy or throw them at a wall and use them to kind of like Arr! or cuddle them whatever you wish to do so that's my little pattern which I'll link underneath um, and I wanted to just mention everyone that's made them so I'm going to do a little montage as I'm talking of everyone that's made one and put it on Ravelry so far. I know there are more on Instagram but I haven't had time to go into Instagram and do screenshots and everything. Um, so this is everyone that's made them so far so just thank you so much for showing the love for the little droplets and thank you everyone for buying it and having faith in me for actually putting together a pattern you might be able to follow. Um, and I wanted to just finish talking about the Amagrimi along. Um, Amy from Noble Character Crafts wrote a pattern, um, a pattern, a poem that she said would be brilliant to go with the little droplets um, if you're giving it as a gift or something. So I'm going to try and do something with this poem. She said I can use it, which is incredibly generous of her, all about the little drop of wonderful. And it's so good. So I've got it on my phone. I'm going to read it out to you. I'm a little drop of wonderful. I'm here to help you out when you're feeling frustrated and need to give a shout. Squeeze me, you won't hurt me. I'm soft and very small. I want you to feel better. Just throw me at the wall. Or when you have had a sad day and are feeling rather blue, give me a hug, I'll dry your tears. I will be here for you. We all have good and bad days. Be sure to keep in mind you're a little drop of wonderful and one of a kind. Isn't that brilliant? It actually makes me feel a little bit like, oh. <laughs> so she said I can actually use that and because I was talking about maybe doing printables to go with it um, as part of the pattern so that if you were doing it as a gift you could like have a little certificate to send with it and explain what it's for. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put some work in and I'm going to do that. Thank you Amy. Um, and Amy is noble character crafts in case I haven't said. Are you ready? Shall we talk about the Strictly Sock Along 2021? <laughs> the glittery 10 paddle is back so the Strictly Sock Along 2021 this is the fourth fifth fifth year how long have we been doing the Strictly Sock Along it can't be the fifth year can it when did I start 2016 I think I'm sure yeah I think this is year five of the Strictly Sock Along so if you're not familiar with what the Strictly Sock Along is it is the cheatiest, glitteriest, silliest sock along of the year. Basically, we knit or crochet socks whilst watching Strictly, the Strictly Come Dancing, which is the UK, the original, <laughs> um, Dancing with the Stars. I think everywhere else in the world it's called Dancing with the Stars. And we knit or crochet socks whilst watching it. It sounds simple. And it is simple, but the idea of the sock along is that not everybody watches it. Not everybody has a television. So people are encouraged to cheat, use underhand, cunning tactics to get themselves into the Strictly sock along, even if they're not actually watching Strictly or Dancing with the Stars. And it's one of the fun parts of the sock along is reading how everyone is cheating. Somebody last year knit socks because they were in Vienna, which is home of the Viennese Waltz. They had an excuse, and if you've got a good excuse and you can tell me what it is, you're in. So you don't necessarily have to watch Strictly to be part of it. I happen to love Strictly. It's one of the few things left on television which we can all watch as a family. And we're quite spaced out with our kids. Phoebe's 10, Lilia's 15 and we all love it equally and we all love the Strictly Sock Along 
It's just an excuse for glamour and silliness. It leads us up to Christmas and it's all just wonderful. I never know who half the people are, half the celebrities are that join in and I don't care because by Christmas, I will be most of their number one fans. You can guarantee it. It happens every year. I go, who are they? And by the end, I'm like, oh, I love her. I love him. We've got our first um, same-sex male partnership this year, which is brilliant. Last year, we had our same same-sex female partnership, but unfortunately, they had to drop out early because one of them was diagnosed with COVID um, halfway through. It should be running for the full length this year, so we should be kicking off with the launch show um, on the four, what's four, the 11th. I think it's the 11th of September. I'm not sure yet, but it will all be in the thread and I'll keep that thread updated in Ravelry. That's where the FO thread is and the chatter thread. Prizes get drawn from both. I will also keep you updated on Instagram if you're not on Ravelry. And I also draw prizes from the Instagram hashtag, which is on the screen now um, as well. So there's opportunities left, right and center if you're joining in to win prizes. After the first year, we started to have like an official sock yarn or pattern or something like that. It just happened accidentally um, through no organization of my own, usually the uh, forethought and organization of other people. And I didn't get my act together quite this year. I thought about it, but I just never quite got into it. We've had a lot of stuff going on this year, as you can imagine. And then right at the last minute, I had a message from the lovely Susie at Elder Flower Stitches, um, who dyes the most amazing yarn, and she is going to do the official uh, Strictly Sock Along colour this year. If I have a picture already, I will put it on the screen. I don't know if I'll have it by the time I'm finishing editing off this video, but I will say keep an eye on Elder Flower Stitches on Instagram. She's going to be doing sock sets. They are going to be released this coming Monday, which is the 6th of September, hang on, no, the 3rd, 4th, yeah, this Monday, the 6th of September at 7 p.m. British summertime. Set your timers, set your reminders. I have, I'm going to be first in the line, and I don't care about pushing you all out of the way. <laughs> so she is the official sock yarn for this year. Loads of dyers do do Strictly themed yarn, though. I know that... Um, Bird Street are doing a, like a, a club, a Strictly themed club. Um, I know that um, Sherry Iris has done um, a nice ballroom themed yarn, which I actually have a skein of, oh, which I haven't used yet. I can't bring myself to it, it's so beautiful. I don't know if she'll be doing that again this year, but there are loads of dyers um, do Strictly themed yarns that you could use. You don't have to use a Strictly themed yarn. You can use any yarn or pattern you like. But if you do come across some that are themed, share them with me because I want to share them on Instagram so people know about it because it's all part of the fun seeing like things like that that we can like bring into that kind of theme of the Strictly fun, the Strictly season if you like. So make sure you do share them. I'm also going to start doing my Strictly updates separately to the podcast and there are a couple of reasons behind this. One, every time Strictly Sock Along is on I struggle with the length of my podcasts because it gets super long with drawing prizes and yabbering on about glitter and fake tan and everything <laughs> so I'm going to do them as a separate video um, I was thinking of doing a sort of five six minute video weekly say on a Sunday or a Monday and then I was worried that that might get a bit too much because I do vlog um, every week over on this at Wonderful Life and I'm planning on doing Vlogtober by the way, I haven't said that yet, but I am planning on doing Vlogtober over there. So I was worried it might get too much, but I also wanted to use those videos to generate income for charity. We had a bit of a charity element to it last year and I really liked that. So what I was thinking of doing is doing a little extra video every week or maybe every two weeks, depending on how my week is going. Um, you know, two kids and I work as well. Um, and I'm doing my other channel. <laughs> And this channel so I've got a lot going on but I would love to do a video maybe every week just a really short one drawing any prizes little thoughts on what's been going on in Strictly and what's been going on in the sock along but it might be every two weeks maybe every three but I'll just do regular videos and I'm going to put adverts on them and any income generated from those videos I'm going to donate to charity I haven't I've got a few in mind I haven't picked which one yet I shall let you know in the next episode or, or the first Strictly video. So that's my idea. So if you see the little Strictly updates popping up, let the adverts play because that income at the end, I will tell you how much those videos are earned and that will be going to charity. Okay, does that all make sense? This is going to be such a long podcast. Welcome back. <laughs> if you're joining in, there will be prizes. 
There are always prizes with the Strictly Soccer Long. There are five categories for winning prizes. I shall tell you what they are. This is why the Strictly Soccer Along takes up such a lot of time on my podcast. This is why I'm going to do it separately. Okay. Category one is the never too early for a 10 from Shirley category. <laughs> as soon as the first 10 is awarded, I will draw one winner at random from the chatter thread and also from the Instagram hashtag. So that's two prizes. The Halloween category will be a winner drawn randomly from the finished object thread for anyone that has a finished object in there by the time of the Halloween show. That's how you win a prize on the Halloween category. Three, the Made It to Blackpool prize category is a winner drawn randomly from the FO thread for anyone with finished objects in there by the date of the Blackpool show, which at the moment is suspected to be Saturday the 14th of November, but that might change. So if you've got an FO in the thread there by that date, then you'll be, uh, you'll be in, the, in the random draw for a prize. The fourth category is rule bending. I will choose at least one winner who I believe has employed the most impressive rule bending and underhand tactics. So if you are bending the rules, make sure you tell me when you post your project anywhere you're posting it, whether it's the FO thread, the chatter thread, or using the Instagram hashtag. You tell me you're cheating so I can see what you're doing because there will be prizes for cheating. And the final category is right at the end of the soccer long. It is the fabulous prize. Um, I will draw a winner at random from the chatter thread, a winner at random from the FO thread, a winner um, at random from the Instagram hashtag and for the first time a winner at random from the comments on my Strictly update videos on YouTube. So you've got four places where you can be in order to win a prize at the end. So there'll be at least four prizes at, you know, just drawn from when, the, when it's all closed and I've closed all the threads, which is usually like the first week in January 2022, um, I will draw all the prizes then. And there we go. That is the Strictly Sock Along. I'll put all the links underneath to all the rules and everything. If you're joining in, tell me. I can't start chatting in the chatter thread. It's so exciting. People are already chatting on Instagram. Make sure to keep an eye out for the yarn popping up and make sure you share with me any Strictly related patterns and yarn and so on that you're finding as you, as you go through social media and everywhere you go. <laughs> Oh, after all that strictly excitement I think it's time to say goodbye <laughs> it's going to be really long because of that but like I say I'm going to be separating out strictly videos um, so that it doesn't get too um, lengthy in the old podcast uh, okay F and finally the bit at the end where we mop up and give you any other news etc I wanted to float an idea with you um, my friend Cherie um, who you will know um, she has the Ollie and Bella podcast. Um, we have been talking about possibly doing a little make-along together for a blanket. So I had asked for some ideas for a blanket pattern for some yarn I had, some cotton yarn that I had um, for Phoebe. And a lot of people suggested some really good patterns. And a couple of people, including Cherie, suggested the six-day kid blanket. And she um, wants to make another one and sort of suggested maybe we do a little make-along together. And then the more we talked about it, we thought maybe we'd do it in the new year, but open it up so that knitters and crocheters could join in to make blankets. We'll be making the six-day kid blanket, but we were also thinking of maybe encouraging people to join in by using like lesser-known designers who are just starting out. So obviously the six-day kid blanket is a really popular one, but there are a lot of designers that are maybe new that maybe only have a few projects being made, and it might be a good way to sort of give them a bit of a lift. If you're aware of any sort of new blanket uh, designers, knit or crochet or something. So what do you reckon? Would you be up for a little blanket along starting in January when it's still cold or perhaps even colder? Um, than it is before the end of the year and cosying up with a bit of blanket making what do you reckon and we'll do a prize each it'll be mainly for fun and comfort and just that winter you know just that winter coziness but sherry and i will both rustle up a prize each what do you reckon
would you be up for that? Let me know. The other thing I wanted to update you on, you probably, I don't, you probably can't even see because she's so tiny. So this leads me on to two pieces of information. A lot of, I, I said I would find out the pattern. So back in episode 79, I said I'd find out the pattern for this little creature, little chick that was sent to me as a gift. <laughs> oh my goodness. She's called Henrietta Cluck, is the name given to her. She's been living here ever since the last podcast. And the pattern for everybody that wanted to know is Tiny Chickens by Anna Horacevic, who, um, who is Mochi Mochi Land, I'm sure you've heard of. It's a free pattern, by the way, which is really good. And it leads me on to give you another piece of news. We are chicken owners now. So I'll put a little bit of footage whilst I'm talking. Um, last Sunday, so we haven't even had them a week, we went and picked up our three chickens and they are making themselves at home in their new chicken palace in the back garden. They seem to be settling in very well. We've had no eggs yet. They're eating out of our hands though. We haven't let them out of their run yet. They're getting used to their new home and getting to know it. And then tomorrow, which is Saturday, which will be day six, we're gonna let them out in the garden to have a really good rummage about. Phoebe is just, about to combust with excitement. She's so happy with them. And their names, we have got a speckled marin um, hen. She is called Peggy Sue. And that's because I wanted to call her Susan, but I was overruled, so I compromised with Peggy Sue. But we do tend to just call her Peggy. <laughs> uh, and she's big, she's, a, she's very, very big. Um, and she's very friendly. And I think she's gonna be a real character. And we have a black tail who's um, a bit bonkers and actually living up to her name because we called her Hey Hey, which Lilia chose. Um, and it's the same as the chicken, the crazy chicken that keeps eating rocks, regurgitating them and then eating them again from Moana. <laughs> and then we have a gold line chicken called Cloud. Um, so called because she's got a white fluffy bum. Um, and that was the one that Phoebe named. So we've got Cloud, Hey Hey, and Peggy Sue. And they are delightful. And we are loving them so far. And we're really glad that we did it. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not good with animals, but I have to say I'm a little bit in love with them. I didn't get very much sleep for the first four nights because I kept waking up worrying about them. <laughs> it was like having a baby. So yeah, we are now chicken owners. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. And thank you so much for being so welcoming in this uh, internet-y space that we share here on YouTube. You are always so kind and so generous with your comments and your time and I really really appreciate it and the internet can be a dark and scary place and I feel that this place is not and I feel very very fortunate about that so thank you. Thanks for your likes, thank you for subscribing, thank you for your messages and comments. Um, they are always always so appreciated and I never um, under, underestimate? No. Under, under something? I never, they do not go unappreciated. They mean a lot to me. That's what I'm trying to say with words that apparently I do not have. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little crafty escape for a little bit of time. And until next time, happy knitting, happy crocheting, and I'll see you again very soon.